I wanted to talk about post CSS on a recent video I did about the state of CSS survey. Post CSS came out as an award winner for what CSS developers most wanted to learn. And that's kind of a strange choice, I thought, just because of what it is and in this particular time, why it's still valuable. So let's look at what it is, what it offers, and if it's still viable. Post CSS is essentially a, an API for a series of um, plugins and transformations that you can make to CSS. This is not the same as pre-processing, which is where you write in a separate type of file, which gets converted into CSS, but this is where JavaScript acts on your CSS to make conversions, changes, and adaptions to the files. So it can be done post writing your CSS, or can be done in a post creation step. Post CSS would usually be set up with a task runner like a grunt or gulp, and then run as you work on your CSS to uh, do any number of tasks that you've configured it to do. It can work with a preprocessor, so it can also do the, the SAS compile into regular CSS and then perform extra additions on it. The main examples, according to their website, the first thing they go straight in with is auto prefix, uh, the super popular library. The post CSS preset, which lets you do modern CSS in advance and polyfill it backwards. CSS modules to make unique class names linting, and then a grid system. These are kind of the top bullet point headline pieces for post CSS. The first thing to note is that even if you don't know much about post CSS, chances are you've probably used it in any sort of webpack project which extracts CSS, you know, create React app, anything like this. There's usually some sort of post CSS plugin involved in working with your CSS. However, the really the, the summary is it's a JavaScriptification of CSS, if that word was real. There was an article a few years ago about the difficulties of learning JavaScript now because of the complexity. That NPM ecosystem meant that you had to import your libraries, but that didn't work in a browser, so now you had to run through a bundler. There's also the ES6 features, which didn't work everywhere, so you'd have to run through some sort of transpilation like Babel. Then there's the cross-browser concerns. Then there's the things like JSX, which is a completely new type of JavaScript which doesn't work in a regular browser so again has to involve a build step everything has become convoluted and has meant a series of libraries are needed in conjunction just to write a simple hello world application there were clearly a lot of people who found that really appealing in that you kind of get all these different bolts and tools and post css really seems like an attempt to really javascriptify your css by adding on a bunch of features in the same way it has done for javascript but i don't really feel there's as much demand for that so let's run through them so auto prefixer generally is something that will take your property and also add the browser prefixes to them. So back in the early days of, of CSS3, if such a thing, uh, there was a requirement to have a lot of these browser prefixes. So dash webkit, dash moz, dash ms, dash o. And without those, it simply didn't work. So you'd have to include all these versions. That is tedious. And so any tool which is gonna just make the duplications for you is really useful. Nowadays, I really don't see much relevance. And if you're really working with super edge browser features and you're using these prefixes, I would kind of argue you, you should be typing those out yourself. Most of the time, you're going to end up just duplicating or, or making a lot of code bloat for no necessary reason. Tomorrow's CSS, the idea of using, um, the idea of needing something to backfill modern CSS. So there was the uh, Next CSS and Next JS, not to be confused with the server side Next JS, but there was a JS Next and CSS Next. The idea was you can start working on those new features and then we'll convert them back so they still work in the old browsers. Again, if you're really working on super new CSS features that don't work in all the browsers, I think you should probably be managing your own fallbacks for how it should work in other places. I don't feel that generally people day to day are working on loads of new features. Plus there are support tags which specifically enable you to, to wrap things where they're supported. So again, this is kind of fixing a problem I don't necessarily feel that many uh, CSS developers are running into very commonly that you wish you could use all these new features but the browsers won't support it. For quite a while now that most of the kind of newer features or big features to come down the pipeline are all safely in browsers. CSS modules, or just more the feature about converting your class names to have unique IDs, could be valuable, but chances are you'd be using that in conjunction with some CSS in JS library, or using some sort of strong naming convention, like a, a BEM or, or something that will enable you to avoid those kind of issues. I 
guess you could use something like this, but it's not worth setting up a whole post CSS for. CSS linting, I mean, how often are you really creating CSS lint errors? And the grid system that's just daft, grid has been solved with grid, you know. The point is that it probably sounds really appealing that you can make your CSS or super plugin customizable in the same way that your JavaScript is. And you might tell me that there are particular projects in which this is a really valuable introduction or is able to solve a whole bunch of repetitive tasks or solve things which have been very hard to do in regular CSS. But for the most part, I can't see many benefits of this post CSS plugin system. And I feel like modern solutions, either with a CSS in JS or just writing your files in a better structured way, would kind of do a lot of this for you. Or there's a lot of things being offered here, which I don't think are problems that need special plugins to solve anymore. That's my view, you know, argue as you will. But um, <laughs> let me know what you think. Cheers, guys.